Morning all. How are we all today? A little bit later than I expected this morning because my son decided to print out what feels like an entire tree's worth of paper related to something related to college. I don't know what, but an awful lot of stuff was uh, coming out of the printer and the printer is just there. I can't see it, but it's just over there and it's uh, quite noisy so that didn't seem like a good thing to be doing while we're on stream so thought i'd wait until that finished and now it's over so thought i would get going and do a little bit of development work start my week off it's a monday um, because we're late i've already had my cup of tea so i just have my water and go do a little bit of go programming did quite a busy weekend. I've done some Objective C this weekend, looking at moving my uh, little Mac app called Daily Jotter uh, to support fat binaries and the upcoming uh, Apple Silicon transition. So getting it supported in the ARM architecture seemed like a good idea. So I started work on that this weekend. What else have I done? Not a lot really. Um, I did some Python programming yesterday. Looking at some RST to PDF things. That'll probably come up again later this week. So today we're going to do some Go. Start with some Go. So, that one there. So, Radio, my little Flickr uploader. What's going on with Radio? What I wanted to start looking at today was this action, this. Uh, Issue here. Um, well, what are these two? Add a photo to a group or set the privacy level. Uh, set the privacy level would be quite useful so that I can have photos that don't belong in my public stream, but I can upload them by setting a keyword such as flickr.private and it goes private or flickr.family and it goes to my family area, something like that. I think that would be useful. And also the ability to add a photo to a group would be extremely useful so that I could say this particular photo needs to go say to the elephant group or to the Flickr uh, central group or something like that. So that's these two look quite useful to get done in the relatively near future. Um, though looking at this entire list, they all quite look quite important. Restore deleted keywords to file off to upload. Less important, but more like good housekeeping and not too difficult to do, but not remotely urgent, so we don't have to hurry about that one. I think I'll start with uh, looking at this privacy level one. So I click through to that. Um, as you see, add ability to set the Photos privacy level, this would allow me to add a keyword of flickr.family to my photo, which then sets that photo's privacy level to family, etc. So that's the general plan, see if we can do something like that. And to do that, we're going to need to use the Flickr API. So, well, let's look at how it's going to work in Rodeo first. Um, so here's Rodeo, and more importantly, we're going to need the YAML file that we use for configuration. Um, item, open up item, that one there I think is my config, yep, so if I, uh, um, no, that's st, then what's going to happen here is I'm going to start showing you my keys, so let me prevent you seeing my keys for a minute while I open up the file, so let's open up radio yaml, open it in vim, and yes, it does show my API keys immediately. So let me scroll them off the screen, like so. I could probably, should probably know how to do folded, so I could just fold them up away, but I don't have that ability yet. So here we've got the uh, Vim file, radio.yaml, it's in Vim rather. And we have this rules section here, line 16, rules. What we're doing in rules, is we have a set of actions. So here's an action here. Um, so from here through to here is an action. And what this does is it has a set of 
commands, so albums is a command, add it to these albums, that means, so add it to album ID 72157, etc. And then condition is the rules by which this action is then run. And a condition in this case is it must have the 365 kernel 2020 um, keyword attached. That's essentially entirely keyword based. So includes all means includes all these keywords. And you can see that here, condition include, this is an action of delete. And then if it includes any of these asterisks or edited in Lightroom, please delete them. Um, here, if it's got the keyword Rob Allen, delete it and add a whole load more albums. So what I want to do is copy one of these and make it, let's uh, take that one there. I think, yeah, that one there looks promising. Uh, to there. Uh, put it at the bottom to here. Right, so the action is going to be privacy level, something like that. Privacy level. And then I want the privacy level to be family, say. I need to look them up from the Flickr API key, I suspect. Oh, apparently my title says I'm looking at RST to PDF, according to Spabby. Hey, Spabby. Um, that's because I'm rubbish at doing this streaming thing. So I thought I had, ah, I know what I did. I changed my title page. But I didn't change the thing that sends it to street. <sighs> so complicated, this stuff. Can I do that whilst I'm live? Is that possible? Let's uh, open up a Safari and have a look, shall we? Bit meta, I suppose. Twitch TV Acrobatic. Not a big deal. No, it's probably not a big deal. Uh, not at my level of competence, at least. <laughs> uh, presumably, this is a section of the stream where my friends tell me how to use Twitch. And uh, we had uh, Felis a couple of days ago teaching me how to do clever things with splits and transitions and stuff. And today's Fabi's telling me I can't use the uh, titles. Amazing. Uh, what do you reckon? Video producer, channel, creator dashboard? So many choices here. You'd think there'd be a handy edit button. Maybe there is a handy edit button. I just don't know where it is. Dashboard. Create a dashboard. This might be an expert at this stuff. So he knows all about it. in my stream manager and edit stream info. That looks like a promising button, doesn't it? There we go. Yeah, so I can change that to go oh, no, Rodeo. Rodeo, because that's the app. I can't type today either. Unfortunately, you can't see if I spell them mistakes. Rodeo, uh, more Flickr API integrations, integrations. And then if I hit save here, hopefully, maybe it'll update. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Anyway, good morning. Good morning, Spabby. So we're going to look at set this privacy level. Um, so action level family, and it's going to include a keyword to do that. I'm thinking Liquor.family as my keyword. And I think we're going to try two different actions simultaneously because I don't want that keyword being published to Flickr because it's an internal workflow type thing. So the idea is I set Flickr.family onto this photo. When I upload the photo to Flickr, then it's going to become privacy level family. I don't need that keyword to be displayed against the photo as well. So let's set this delete action here and put that into this action as well. So my action, this one here, is going to delete the keyword after having set the privacy level to family. Sounds like a plan. 
How are we going to do it though? How are we going to do all that? Right, how are we going to do that? Let's start with the Flickr API. How many do you reckon that is? Flickr.com. Photos, not photos, Acrobat. Services? Services, there we go, Services API. Don't you just love the fact that our browsers can auto complete stuff we've visited before? That makes life so much easier. So Flickr called their API system the App Garden for reasons that are very Web 2.0 back in the day. I don't think you'd ever do that nowadays, would you? But they've got reasonable amount of documentation. Um, we've got developer guide, we've got the overview, etc. And down the right hand side, we've got the reference with all the options. And something somewhere in here, we'll be able to do privacy. Probably in photos, there's a photo section somewhere. Here we go. You can do a whole load of get stuff. We can do a whole load of set. Oh, look at that one there, set perms. I bet that's the right one. This is sounds promising, doesn't it? Let's look at set perms. Set permissions for a photo. Mm. Yep, yeah, I would say that's definitely on the right lines. This method requires authentication with right permission. I should think so too. Uh, HTTP post, that makes sense. Now Flickr called their API and RESTful API. Let's just say that this was created a long while ago and we didn't really understand what we were doing as an industry, or at least not everyone did. And to call this a RESTful API, stretching the definition of RESTful well beyond what you would consider a RESTful API today. However, and we need to send in the API key, we need to send in photo ID, and then we need to send in his public, his friend, his family, all three of them at all the time. So we're replacing the entire permissions object or all the permission uh, properties of this photo in one go. You can't just set one without setting all the others. I just suppose it's not a bad idea. Uh, perm comment. Who can add comments to the photo? Oh, that's interesting. I don't want to change that. So I'm going to have to read what the current defaults are and keep it the same. Oh no, it's optional, so I can probably just ignore it. And I can ignore add meta, because that's optional too. Oh, so we only need to do is public, his friend, his family. But the same still holds, we probably need to read it first. Maybe, don't know, we'll think about that. An example response, we're going to get back. A photo ID, not a lot there. And a whole load of error codes. I do like the Flickr document, all the error codes that can come back. That's quite helpful. And there's the API Explorer. Okay, so that's the way we're going to do it. Let's jump into the code. Uh, this is going to be an upload. Uh, that button there. Ooh, there we go. Very slow today. Uh, Upload.rodeo, upload.go, there we go. Now, upload is getting really big, so at some point there's going to have to be a refactor because this function is getting bonkers big. Essentially, here's our upload command for when you use a command line to do an upload, you're going to call this command here, and this command has a run closure. And all this closure does is iterate over the list of file names you've provided and call the upload file function for each one. The upload file function is down here. It starts on line 88. And I don't know how to jump to the end, but I'm going to have to scroll down. One day I'll learn all the keyboard shortcuts. It starts on line 88, goes all the way down here. Look at that. To there, no, even more, even more. Look at that, it goes on and on and on and on. We've got to dry run, so we're about to actually do the work now. It goes on. There's the upload file to Flickr, upload the photo, upload the stuff, add it to an album. There's the end 318. Well, that's a really long method, and at some point, I'm going to have to cut it down a bit, refactor it out. Well, I keep saying that. And I keep just adding new features because adding new features is more fun. Ah, this is how technical debt gets. Grows and grows and grows, doesn't it? 
So first of all, we need to go near the top. The first section of this function is working out the rules, which is done here, process rules. So what we're going to do, uh, we must have an action section as well. Maybe we do the rules first. Maybe we do the rules first. So we look for the keywords. And then we must, there we go. So we've, we've determined that we've got valid uh, keywords for this photo. And now what we're going, going to process, and now we've got to work out what we're going to do. So rules to action delete means we're going to delete the action. And then if it's an album, so we're going to add it to an album. So we need a new section here for privacy. If rule dot action dot, well, what did we call it? Privacy level. See, privacy level is not going to be good enough, is it? Because the API doesn't work like that. The API actually set friend, family, and public to all three. So maybe this needs to be privacy. Um, maybe it needs to look like that, Fam family, colon, true. Uh, what's the other two? Friend and public, friend, true, public, false. Maybe at least look more like that, you reckon? Does that make more sense? And if you don't set it, we could either error or we could make a default. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for that. That gives us a big biggest flexibility and I'm not sure that I ever want to have a photo that's friend only but not also family because that doesn't make sense in my world so I do want to set family and friend but other people might not want to do that other people might want to do friend but not family that sounds quite dysfunctional doesn't it <laughs> you dysfunctional family then Flickr has you covered I like to believe that my family is not dysfunctional. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, how are we going to do that? Um, right, so the first thing we have to do is alter the um, set of structures that represent that config file. Now that's in this action thing. So if I hit Command B on that, we'll probably jump to the right place. And we do. Oh, the joys of a good idea. And here we have config.go. And here's my action, it supports delete and an array of albums. So now it's going to support a privacy. No, it's, yes, which, ooh, it's going, which is a privacy. And I don't know if this allows, let's call that permissions. Sorry, so the name of the variable is privacy and its type is a permissions. So permissions needs to be created. And it'll we'll put it up here. ESA type permissions. Oh, yeah, permissions because there's more than one. It's a struct, and it's going to have. What did we say it's going to have? It's going to have public, which is a boolean. Well, let's say it's not boolean. No, oh, they're like colons. That must be from some other language. Um, what else is it going to have? Public, friend and family. Friend and family. Like that. And let's sort those. Sort lines. Oh, that's interesting. There we go. I've not set a keyboard shortcut for it. I thought I'd look up the keyboard shortcut, but I've not actually set one. I must have it set in one of the other IDEs, which of course would be the benefit of moving all my IDEs to IDEA um, IntelliJ. The thing's called IntelliJ, the one that has all the plugins so that I can program in Go, PHP, Python, um, all inside one IDE, because then I'd only need to set up all the keyboard shortcuts once. But 
then you have the other problem that when I hit Command F to do a search, or Shift Command F, I use this file blast quite a lot. I regularly have that ticked, not, obviously not in Goland, but in PyCharm and in, in PHP Storm. I've normally got that limiting to the type of files I want to search for. And it's convenient, I have to, don't have to keep rechanging that because obviously PyCharms keeps it with the Python one and PHP Storm keeps it with the PHP file mask. And that doesn't appear to be stored per project, which is a shame because that would be way more useful. But what can you do? It is what it is. So now we've got our permissions. Interesting that there's a twiddly underline on that. Type her in word. Is that not his spell permissions? Permissions. Still a typo. Not a typo, it's just like, there we go. Permissions. I noticed I had to rely on my ID to tell me that spelling mistake. Okay, so we've now got the permissions as a structure. It's going to be a family, friend, or public, and it's going to be set off the privacy. Um, do we need to set defaults on them? Probably. Defaults are done down here. Maybe not. No, maybe we don't need to set defaults. I wonder what happens if you don't set it there. Ah, we must have a way to extract it. Ah, and that's what this map structure thing is. That's right. So we need to do the map structure. Uh, where's the delete one? That'd be a good one to copy, wouldn't it? Oh, deletes, oh, deletes a ball, so we don't need to map structure it. So, yeah, um, question there from Gary. It's interesting you can create all these value objects in one file. Sometimes one have gone too far with one class per file in PHP. And that is a good point, particularly for creating a whole load of related definitions. It is really, really convenient to put, group them all together. So. My concept of my config object, you know, you have to have the action permissions together. So putting them in one file does make life a lot easier. And we don't do that in PHP. We would, I in PHP, I would have created a permissions.php and referenced it inside my action.php, which would have all re also rec uh, referenced my album.php. So you would have ended up with an awful lot more files. Um, yeah, that's good. That is a very good point there. But the different conventions in different languages definitely makes things, um, I don't know, you just don't think about it, do you, unless you see the other language. And obviously, clearly, I mean, go mode at the moment. I think, oh yeah, that was quite normal. But in PHP, I would never have done that. And exceptions are a really good example of that. Um, in PHP, most of our exceptions don't have any text in them whatsoever because we use them as type um, signals. So you create four or five exceptions just for their type name. And we've got four or five extra files that need to be loaded. Hmm, it is an interesting point. Difficult to change that convention now though, because it's kind of baked into the PSR so our package manager automatically loads for us. In terms of our package manager composer, it's auto loaded system. We'll use the PSR4 standard and the PSR4 standard, one class, one file. Hmm, yeah, good thinking there. That's um, one of those interesting differences between the languages. So now I've got this config. Here I can do raw.action and presumably it'll now go to complete privacy. And now we need to look them up. Do we need to look them up? Yeah, there's a privacy rule, so we're going to need to do uh, privacy equals, so I suppose we could just actually just attach it, dot privacy, something like that. Um, why is that, why is that red? Non-ball. Ah, oh, you can't test that. So you've got to test if it exists. Ah, oh, so the way we do that, then you can tell Go is not my native language, or what I've got least experience in. 
how about that? If length of rule to action dot privacy is greater than zero. No, it doesn't seem to think I can test it. It's a length. Oh, because it's not an array. So we need to know how do you tell if something is set? Oh, maybe just. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it's always set. So I could do if rule dot family. Hmm. Not sure this is going to work. And friends. And um, family, friends, and what's the other one? Public. No, it's not friends, it's presumably friend. Friends is better, though, isn't it? Let's rename that. Friends. And we benefit from the whole IDE thing again, so I use Shift, uh, Shift F6 to rename it, so that if you go back to config.co, you'll see that it's automatically renamed it here for me as well. So if, I wonder if, oh no, he doesn't like me doing that. I wonder what the go format rule is for multiple lines. And it looks like that. Something like that, there we go. So, uh, no, we don't want ands there. We want ors. So if family, friends, or public, one of those is set to true, then we go set the privacy. But the problem with that is that if I want to set all three to false, I, I want this to be just me, to vi uh, visible only to me, that's not going to work. But I think we need to make that optional. So that's got to be an optional thing. And I don't know if you can do that in a structure. And in PHP, we'd do that. I don't think I've used that before. So how you set an optional element in a, in a structure? Hmm. Let's ask the Googles. Go bang. Optional element in a struct. Come to my stream. Discover that I don't know everything. Use omit empty in if you want to write to a zero value and a null not specified. If you uh, if you need to worry about the difference between a zero value and null not specified, do what GitHub API does and use a pointer. See, so it says here JSON and BSON support the omit empty tab. And how that works. The JSON colon group, comma, omit empty. Now we're not using JSON directly because this is YAML and we're using uh, Viper. But Viper does the map structure thing, which does basically the same thing. And the whole point of map structure, as I'm using it here, is to map the name inside the YAML file, which is include underscore any to the variable name includes any with no underscore within go. So I wonder if we can do that here. And it looks like we've got a couple of spaces, that structure, um, and it's going to be family, comma, emit, empty, like that, omit empty. So I wonder if that works. That's family, that's friends, and that's public. You can just leave it empty. It's not always required, according to Captain Mosin. And that's interesting. So if it is not always required, 
then how do I test if it exists? Oh, maybe I need an is nil test. Okay, so let's go back here. It'd be neater if I don't have to put those in. I can leave it empty. So if it's not there, then instead of testing for that, what I want to do is tell if privacy exists is not nil. Can you do that? No. Not equal, not nil. Null? No, it doesn't like null. This null is... Okay, null's a variable then. Nil is obviously... Swift. Yes, you not? Yeah, so Captain Mohan says... Mo Mohsen, sorry, says... I think if you just not pass that field, it will be null. It will be nil, yes. I think that's plausible. That's highly plausible. But how do we test for it not being nil? I must have done that somewhere before, mustn't I? Right now. Not equal to nil. Oh, it's single. <laughs> not equal to nil. And there's that whole PHP thing coming in again, because I do double equals, because I want to test for uh, type safety. But you cannot convert nil to a type permissions. Ah, so maybe I test friends. No, nope. can't convert nil to type ball either. So it's not a test to nil unless I put an asterisk somewhere. Maybe that's how I do it. So if we look at that, uh, we test errors a lot. Config.rules not equal to nil. Oh, there we go. We've done it before. If the rules are empty, we do it like that. So I want to do, well, if we do for config.rules, we want to do here for rules of action privacy. That must be the correct way to do it. So where's rules in here and have a look? Type rule struct. Ah, rules though is an array. So we can get away with it, because an array can be nil. I reckon we need to tell it that privacy... Uh, where's the asterisk go? I reckon it's one of those. I reckon we do it like that. Privacy permissions. Nope, it doesn't like that. still says you can't. Yes, can. There we go, it's just slow. Have I mentioned that I really, really want a new computer? <laughs> right. Hopefully Captain Mosen will come back and tell me that I've done it right, or that there's a better way of doing it. But until then, let's deal with this privacy thing. Now, privacy is just a variable, so we need to declare it up here. Um, where do we declare it? We should declare it where we declare um, keywords to remove, really, shouldn't we? Which is up here. There we go. So var privacy is a star permissions like that, I reckon. You can hear the dog on the stream, can you? Next door, I've just got a dog. Um, it's yay big. Yay big. Not very big at all, hence it's very noisy. They've been in quarantine for the last 14 days for reasons related to the world at the moment. And I think the dog has been a bit upset about not being able to go for walks. Privacy is now red. Unused variable. Go is really, really particular about things like that. Don't leave your variables unused. Now we set it down here somewhere, so now we've got to use it. So what I'm going to do is what we're going to do, output what we're going to do. So let's put it in here. So here's actions. So let's do an if uh, privacy not equal to nil. And then grab that 
put that there. And we'll just stick a variable in here for a minute of uh, need. To, uh, we'll set privacy will be set to. And then we're going to put something here. Now, if we do percentage uh, V, I think it is, we can just drop uh, privacy here. And it will just output it for us as a sort of objecty thing. So we can actually see what it looks like. So now we can actually see what it'll look like. Um, okay, so let's test that. So to test that, we need to go back here. And we need to create, we must have an image. Uh, let's uh, save that. Like that, that's saved. And ah, oh, that keyword there, I'm pretty sure is on my test image. So let me put that in here. Let's, so actually no, let's do it right. Ah, save. Okay, so let's go back here. Now, my test image is in uh, downloads, ls tilde slash downloads underscore export. I think it's rka something, rk1.jpg, there we are. So what we can do is we can do exif tool, um, dash keyword, keywords, I think it is. Keywords in dollar. It should tell us what the keywords are at the moment. There we are. They are highly and uh, 37,190. I think we can do keywords plus equals flickr.family. Exif tool is the best command line tool ever for dealing with metadata inside images. So let's do that. Now what that should do is create a, add the flickr.family keyword to that image. So if we go back there, we should now check that. And yeah, there we go, flickr.family is now added to that particular image. So that's quite useful. Um, thinking about it, let's take out that delete for a minute and not delete that keyword. Go back here. Right, so now to run my Go application, it's go run main.go, dash dash version, just check it compiles. So it's wearing a click in, compiling up my Go code, and then it'll run it for me. There we go, 0 0.1.1. Not very far forward, this one. Um, and the actual one we want to use is upload. Go my upload. Oh, it looks like I don't have it in my history, which is weird. Oh, maybe I have that, yeah, upload. Dash dash dry run. Uh, tilde slash downloads. Uh, underscore export RK1, something like that. Right, so Captain Mosen has come back. You should change ball to asterisk ball in your struct. That way, if it wasn't set, then it would return nil. So yes, that's helpful because that's what we did, but we did it one level higher. We, instead of going to the ball itself, we've gone the level above and picked the entire um, privacy or the permission structure itself, so it can be left as nil. Also, don't know if it's going to work, but that does seem to be the way that should work. So we've essentially made it a pointer rather than a reference. Still not really got my head around pointers in Go. I think part of that is because I come from a C background and the asterisk looks pretty much the same. It still uses a pointer, but we don't have to manage the memory, so it's not quite the same. And there's no malloking. Very odd. Anyway, where were we? So let's see if we got all that right. So dash dash dry run is what I added a couple of streams ago, which now allows me to actually run the rules without sending the actual file up to Flickr, which is really quite helpful. So let's run that and see what happens. Processing rk1.jpg. Hey, look at that. So we, yes, that looks promising. Look at that, keywords to remove, 37,190. And that's from this rule here. Action delete true includes any 37,190. And then our action here for privacy, if it includes flickr.family, it should set the privacy. It will set the privacy. And that's what I mean by that percentage V. See that percentage V here? It essentially does an object dump of the structure for you. 
So it's true, false, false. I don't think that's what I expected. Should be true, true, false. That's interesting. Doing something wrong there. I would expect it to do something different to that. Um, so I probably... Ah, it's friend, isn't it? That should be friends. We change it to plural. Uh, yes. Because I'm... I, well, I am arrogant enough to assume that I have a plural number of friends. And I would be grateful if nobody commented against that egotistical view of myself. Spaby thinks the order of the config in the strut is different to the YAML. Almost certainly. So this is family, friends, public, and this one is uh, something else. Out of Skype, it's no family, friends, public. So hopefully, um, let's go back there. Family, friends, public. So it should be true, true, false. Um, obviously, I think alphabetically when I need to. So let's run that again and see if we get true, true, false. We can play with that and find out because logically this, it should be the order of the strut. It'd be a bit weird if it wasn't, wouldn't it? There we go, true, true, false. So if I go back to the structure, uh, there's a the structure. And, oh, what's the command for, no, it's not that command. What's the command for moving things around? I don't remember, is it those two? No, those two? Oh, those two. Um, so let's put public at the top. So public friends, public family friends. So if we run it again now, we'd expect false, true, true. Be useful to find out. Not like I know what I'm doing. Let's see, there we go, false, true, true. Excellent. Okay, so it's doing what we expect. Um, go back there, put that back. Uh, permissions, family, friends, public. And we've correctly determined the privacy. Oh, what I wanted to do now is to make sure it doesn't break if we don't have the privacy there. So in this particular file, because flick.family is set, we're going to bring in this privacy thing. So if I change that to not flicker.family, like so. Then when I run it this time, it's not going to match on that keyword. So as it's not going to match on the keyword, it's going to, as a result, fail to set the privacy. I'll say fail, it will choose not to set the privacy in upload.go. So where's that, where's that privacy thing gone? It's up here somewhere. It's not going to set that because we've not set the correct keyword. So in theory, privacy will be nil. Everything should work as normal, but we won't get this line here. This line here will not be in our next dry run. And it isn't. So we are now, if I've understood this correctly, correctly reading the config file, correctly reading our action, and setting a variable in upload.go to determine whether to set permissions or not. So the only thing we're left to do is actually set that particular permission. How do we do that? Hmm. Copy away, isn't it? Further down. Somewhere down we have the dry run thing. So we go down here somewhere. There's the dry run. So the whole point of dry run is that we've done all the processing. We print out, would upload this photo to Flickr, and then we exit, i.e. return from this function. So we don't actually do the work. So all the work happens after line 235. So first thing we do is remove the keywords. Now we upload the photo to Flickr. Here somewhere, uh, uh, we work out the title, upload the photo here, Up set the upload parameter. Oh, look, we set the upload parameters. Ooh, look. We set the upload parameters and we default to everything true. That's interesting. I wonder if we should do that. So what we should do, if we should set this to privacy, uh, privacy, 
dot public take privacy dot family and privacy dot friend. Now they are not in order. I wonder if they're in the order that they are in docs or something like that, but conceptually they should be in that order. Nice and uh, alphabetical. Now, of course, it's going to be upset about that, which is what that um, sort of yellow background color is for. It's upset because uh, privacy could be nil. So after all that effort to make privacy nil, we probably don't want that to ever be the case. So how are we going to fix that? Now, one the obvious way to do that is just to, if we haven't set privacy by here, set it to something. So if privacy is nil, just instantiate an object and set the defaults to true. But I'm minded to do it in config because that tends to be where I do this sort of stuff. So I wonder if we can do it. In, if it no, oh, we can't do it in config. Because this is an action and it'll be a bit messy. Because we'd have to put in a we'll have to put in some uh, some work to actually run the as we're loading up the file, we would then have to dynamically do it. So if we get I'm doing that for every single action, even if the action is not going to be used, would be inefficient. So yes, it is better to do it in upload.go. You certainly get a stream of consciousness, that's my thinking, don't you, when you I'm on these streams. I'm verbalizing the way my brain works. It's scary, isn't it? So would upload. Right, so let's do it. Right, so it's going to set privacy will be set to here. So what I'm going to do is instead of setting privacy to empty uh, permissions, I'm going to do that. Now the question is, what will it default them to? I don't know. So the obvious thing to do is let's find out. Oh, it's upset about something. So let's go and find out what it's upset about. Um, it's probably upset about one of these. Oh yeah, you can't assign a pointer to a non-pointer. You've got to dereference it. How do you dereference a pointer? Pipe G. Golang. Dereference a pointer. Nope. That's me being too fast for the computer. Uh, Gary's saying that one of the benefits of streaming for him is he's practicing talking and coding, and he needs that for his job, and it's a fun skill to work from, work on rather. Yeah, you're not actually wrong about that. Um, I don't do many demos when I'm speaking because I don't think I can talk and code at the same time. And I am certainly getting better at doing that and thinking on my feet whilst I am actually coding. Of course, forming good sentences sometimes uh, goes out the window because I'm thinking on my feet. Hopefully, though, the ums and ahs are at a minimum because I think Toastmasters is helping me on that. And Captain Mosin has come to the rescue with use an ambersand, which sounds totally and utterly plausible when you think about it because that's what you would do in C or C++ as well. Doesn't like it, though. Maybe you don't use it there. There? Doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? How does point of def Maybe def reference is the wrong phrase. Let's let's take that one. Pointer as pointers to structs. Yeah, like that, use an ampersand. So why doesn't it like it? Am I being too slow for it? Am I, sorry, is my computer too slow that it's still thinking? Cannot use, oh, there we go, look. Cannot use rule, rule, I don't know if you can see that at the bottom of the screen. Cannot use rule, ampersand rule dot action dot privacy, type star star permissions as type permissions. So I wonder if that implies that we should use an asterisk go the other way, because we do reference twice and we want it to reference, maybe. 
coding by trial and error. Okay, so now that's going to set privacy regardless now. And we've still got an error further down, presumably because we're testing for nil, which makes no sense anymore. Um, no, not that one, that one. Yeah, so you can't test for privacy of nil because by definition, privacy will always be set now. So we can do that. Let's just put some white space in. I like my white space. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens because we've not actually set any defaults into that permission structure. So it will be whatever Go sets them to. I don't know if that's good or bad. Currently, we've got the keyword set in the action rules to not find them. So it should pick up the defaults. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. False, false, false. That seems totally plausible. If you're going to default a Boolean to anything, false seems like a good choice. It's the wrong choice, but it does seem like a plausible choice. So the next thing we need to learn is how do we set those defaults? How do we set defaults on a, on a structure? Do you reckon? Uh, pipe G, Golang, set default value in struct. I don't suppose I've done it already somewhere, have I? Doesn't look like it, no. That would have been convenient, wouldn't it? Colon true or something like that. I've obviously looked at this before because it's uh, in the right colour. I had to set default value in struct. Follow this post. A good design to make your type on its body about find the next book constructor. Like my new type. Initialize the structure. Ooh. Oh, I wonder if I can do that default. That would be neat. Because I'm doing a mapping anyway, because I'm mapping my XML, uh, my YAML file into here. I wonder if I can use that lab structure and set default that way. That would be neat. Ah, but that's a particular um, package. We probably don't want to do it that way. So we probably need to do something clever, create a function, set a method on it. So how are we going to do that? Because I, I quite like. OK, so create a function, set a method on it. I've done that before somewhere. Doesn't look like it. That would be have been convenient. It's a function there. You should create a function or maybe set a method for it. Could be lazy, I suppose. But it'd be neater to do it in here, wouldn't it? So should we it's a shame it's not like a Swift structure where you can set a constructor, isn't it? So I can do a function here, can't I? Uh, P permissions um, called set defaults, which uh, doesn't return anything. Is it void to do that? Like that? Uh, meets the brackets where I can do um, p dot family equals true. Family friends and public. Do something like that. And then we just need to call p set defaults. Which we can oh, it's upset about something. Maybe you don't set void. Don't set need to set void. So when we create that privacy object, privacy object. There. We can do privacy dot set defaults. 
Yes, it will return the permissions. Oh, that's neat. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Because, it, well, it returns the last thing you do, doesn't it? Or something like that in, if you don't put an explicit return in. I don't need to return a permission, so because by definition, I'm operating on the structure itself. So I can do privacy.set default. So now if you run our test, we should see true, true, true. Excitement. No, it's still false, false, false. Ah. So do I actually do need to do I that C equals do I need to do that? Let's have a look. Nope. Clearly not. So why didn't that work? Ah, because that is passed in. Uh, hold on. No, we don't do that. We need to return P. Or we need to operate. Oh. Or we need to operate on a pointer. Like that, maybe. And pass it in. Is that the right way around? Not complaining. So if I pass it in as a pointer, I'm essentially passing it as reference. So we can modify the structure inside that function and get to the data change outside. And that worked. Yay. So catching both sides thinks I should return permissions, which implies that, that doing that pointer thing is not particularly Go-like. Every single language has its own idioms and idiomatic way of writing its code. Um, maybe that's more idiomatic C++ and, or Java or something than idiomatic Go. And Captain Merson thinks it'd be more logical to return a permissions like that and return P. Like so. If I do that, does it automatically set it? Or do I now need to reassign? Let's check. If I need to reassign, then I'm going back to my asterisk. Yeah, I need to reassign. So yeah, if I was to return permissions from set default, I would need to do privacy equals privacy dot set defaults. And yeah, no, we won't do that. We're going to do the, we're going to do that way anyway. I think it does better. Makes it clear. Because uh, Go doesn't have classes, the way you attach a function to a structure is by giving it a object. Its first parameter is itself. And somehow that sort of magically does it. I have no idea how that works. At some point I should look that up. Let's just double check I've not written anything. I suppose I should also start thinking about doing some real work. Well, when I say real work, I mean work I will get paid for. Okay, Captain Mason quite likes my uh, Python in the reference, so that's cool. Uh, it's nice that they know some Go because my Go, as you can tell, is remarkably low level. Right, however, now that's right. So let's change that rule in here again. Uh, like that, no, not like that, like that, flicker.family. Did that save? Yes. Okay, so let's go back there again one last time, and now we should be setting the permissions. Move out of the way. Press this in RK1, and we're going to set the permissions to true, true, false. 
I should actually make that a little bit neater. So let's tidy that up. That's on that percentage free permissions. Oh, for goodness sake, one button. Huh? Did I not call it permissions? Or oh, maybe I called it privacy. Privacy will be set to. Pri privacy will be set to. There we go. Right, so instead of doing that, um, let's do. I wonder what Boolean is. Mm. We'll go cheat for a minute. Family, friends. I wonder if plenty of B for ball. That would be cool, wouldn't it? And uh, what's the other one? Public. Percentage. B. Let's try B. And then that's privacy.family. Privacy.friends. And privacy.public. That's a really long line. Let's reformat it. Unknown verb. Doesn't like percentage B, but apparently. Not percentage B for Boolean. We'll leave it on B for now, because we can see. Might make it a little bit neater because we have those weird braces, but I suppose we can fix that later. Let's check. Oh no, don't even get the braces. Oh, there we go. Family true, friends true, public false. So, do we think it's going to work? Place your bets now. Let's run it and see. Let's go do the work. It's uploading the photo. Excited. You excited? Hasn't failed. Let's view that photo. Here it comes. Yay! It's uploaded. I bet you wish I was faster could be as I did. So there's a picture. It's of a class 37. Um, if we scroll down, we should see the permissions somewhere. There's the tag, flickr.family, which has not been deleted. And our permissions are friends and family because that's what we set. It is no longer public. How awesome is that? Yes. Awesome. That is awesome. Of course, now I've got this picture up here that I don't actually want up here. So I'm going to delete it again. So we can upload it again. <laughs> good, 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 good. That worked. Very. When I chose delete, I expected it to disappear. Let's go back to my photo stream and have a look. No, it's still... Oh! Ah, mm -hmm. oh, presumably I'd already uploaded it before anyway. Okay. Should pick a new picture. Remind me to take a new photo so I can put it at the top of my stream. Good, okay, so that's all working as expected. So let's do a git status. Let's modify two files. Let's go back to our act thing. And this is, and our issue is issue six. So git checkout, create a new branch. It's issue six, support privacy. 
like so. Uh, git add commands upload and internal config. Git commit minus v. Support, uh, that's nice about support. Support privacy setting that for support. Change that to set privacy on uploaded photos. Add the new action privacy. Did we call it privacy and privacy levels in the end? Privacy. Which takes three uh, sub three boolean children or family friends friends and public uh, when this action is invoked the permissions on the liquor photo is set pro Appropriately. There we go. So that does that bit. Now we've not quite completed the job. Because the last thing we need to do is not like that. That button there. Let's go to the README. Here's the README. We update the documentation. Good morning, Phyllis. I hope you're enjoying life back in your hometown. Let's get rid of that. So now I'm going to document my change. So let's turn on the example as well. For well, example, the preview so we can see what's going on. Uh, usage, radio resize, radio info, other commands, store dependencies, config. Here we go, I was going to update the config. Uh, upload, rules, here we go, rules from radio. Conditions, action, delete. So I'm going to add another action here. And the action is privacy. And it was family. True. Um, family. Friends, true, and public, true. So we've put the defaults in so that people know if they don't set it, that's what they're going to get. I feel this has been back since last Monday. I would have worked it better like isolation, yeah, but isolation is part and parcel when you do travel in the moment, I'm afraid. Back at work today, I am so sorry. Um, on the flip side, being back at work does mean money, so that's always good. Right, so we've now set that, and I think we document it down here somewhere. Load rules, upload actions, there we go. So let's add a new action here of um, privacy. Remember people, if you don't actually document what you do, then nobody knows anything about it. Oh, Felix is uh, fully employed, so she got money for being uh, on holiday. That is a luxury I don't have. Stability does matter. Take that to there. Right, so um, set the privacy uh, permissions. Uh, too many S's. Permissions on the photo for family, friends, and public. Now, how do we do default? Oh, we don't do default. Do we do default? No, don't do defaults in this bit. Okay. Tidy that up to there. Let's scroll down. Let's have a look what it looks like. There we go. Excellent. So, now we've added our uh, information to the README. Let's commit that. Uh, no, git status, git add readme, git commit, insert document, uh, privacy, priva, 
Class C action in README. Now I can push, click push minus U to origin, and that will send it up, up to the Googles. No, not the Googles, the GitHub's for this one. Now I'll create the pull request, um, hub, hit pull request. Yeah, against not develop for this project, against main for this project. Still oscillating between hub and gh is my command line tool of preference for talking to GitHub. The nice thing about using hub is that it puts this comment at the bottom where you can see your previous, um, all your commit messages, which is quite handy when you want to write your actual uh, GitHub pull request text. The downside of hub though is you can't set the milestone, which you can do if you're using gh. So six one half dozen other. Um, but my GitHub message is going to be this particular commit message because it's basically the same thing. Um, delete that line. Uh, where do you see it? Uh, GQ, isn't it? Oh, it doesn't like that. Double equals set. Oh, it's double equals. There we go. And then we can join those lines together because this is a pull request and the pull request we don't need to worry about setting line limits and stuff like that. I also like to tell it which issue we're closing. No, not closing, we're fixing issue six. Do that, and now that's going to give us the pull request down there. So here's the pull request. It's pull request 15. Fix is six. You can see the linked issue down there. Set the milestone to point two. At some point we'll have to update the version, you notice. Files changed. Three files changed, sounds about right. There's my privacy uh, default in the readme. There's my change to the readme text. Can't see any typos. I like to avoid spelling mistakes. This looks better, doesn't it? Set our permissions, create our permissions variable and set its uh, privacy, uh, set its defaults. If there's an action for privacy, then we're going to assign it that action to our privacy variable. Print out what we're going to set the privacy to. We might want to put an if statement around that at some point that if it's going to be public, if they're all true, don't bother printing it out because that's the default. But for now, I don't think it matters if we always print it out anyway. That's how we do the work. And then in internal, in our config file, we create our permission structure, we set our defaults function, and we add it to our action. Yeah, that all looks good to me. Nobody has pointed out any spelling mistakes to me. So I assume everyone is happy. Git push origin dash dash false. I think that's very much a Gary thing. Though I do have to admit I have pushed false when I needed to in the past. Right, I'm going to merge that. So git checkout main, git merge dash dash ff. Oh no, not, no. Fast forward. And that's going to open up Vim for me. Merge branch, and this one closes 15. Like so. And I can push that main up to GitHub again, and we should see it close issue 15 for us. There we go, 15 is merged. And uh, come up. If I go back to uh, the issue list, we should see yeah, my issue has been closed as well. So issue six is now closed. If you go to issue six, nope, issues six, you see it's been closed because it's been merged.
So I think we can call that done. That's another little new feature into Rodeo. And now I can set the privacy level for photos that I don't want to um, necessarily publish to the world. Git commit minus M PSR fix. Ah, oh, see, you do it like that. So I do CS fix for uh, code style fix. But I have been known, if I've not actually sort of publicized the PR or anything like that, to do git commit minus m dot git rebase minus i head tilde two and then fix up the, the commit into the previous commit push force. And nobody knows that I screwed up. Anyway, peeps, that's been productive. I'm quite pleased with that. And I suppose that I should go and actually earn some money now and do some work. It's Monday. This has been a great start to the Monday. Thanks all for your company. It's been really helpful. Thanks, Captain Mosen, for your advice. Good to speak to you again, Felix and Spadley. And all have a good day. <laughs>